Welcome to episode 68 of Anchored in Education. I'm E. Scott England, and Anchored in Education is the podcast dedicated to all things education. Educators across the world routinely engage in conversations surrounding fundamentals, concepts, and new ideas that improve this great profession. Sometimes we agree, other times we disagree. But at the end of the day, we are all anchored in education. Last week, my good friend Ken Wallace joined us to talk about getting it right for every student. It was an amazing episode that was well-received by many. Now, one area that we covered on a very surface level was the business partners that Maine Township High School District 207 have engaged with to bring amazing experiences to students. I felt we couldn't miss out on the opportunity to have Ken talk more about these partners and how they have expanded to the numbers they have. Take a listen. All right, Ken, last week our episode came out where we talked about getting it right for every student. And uh, if you haven't, if no one's heard that episode yet, they need to go back and they need to listen to that because it was full of the amazing things that you're doing at uh, Maine Township High School District. But uh, you mentioned kind of briefly in that episode about your business partners. And so uh, when you look back in 2014, when you kind of did the, the career advisement redesign, at the time you had over 70 business partners, which is pretty good. But if someone were to look today in 2020, uh, you're up over 620 business partners. And so I'm hoping for this bonus content here of Anchored in Education that you can tell us more about how uh, you find the business partners and how schools can go out and find business partners, but also what role they play in the advisement process for your students. And and I have people speak a lot about our, uh, to me, about our career advisement program. And one of the questions that I always get is, you know, will I have to add staff? And and the simple answer is yes. And, and, and so in the business partnership piece of this, this is the one place where we've added staff. When we started this, um, I added a, a district career coordinator, and her name is Dr. Laura Cook. Um, she had done some WIA grant work with us. She knew about the Bureau of Labor Statistics data. She knew about the job market. So she was really, really highly qualified to do this job, and she just has gotten better and better. She's literally one of the best in the nation. She actually advises other programs on how to start it. Um, so what we started initially with was just we advertised. We had, you know, roundtables. We brought people in. Uh, I met someone on a plane one time flying to a conference that had a business locally. I got their card. They became a business partner. Our, you know, our staff, our board started recruiting. If we go to a chamber event, um, we would start collecting cards and we would start, you know, reaching out to them and setting up partnerships with people. And then, um, and then we stayed with that. Now we finally outgrew Laura, uh, as one person. And so today we have Laura Cook, who is our career coordinator, but now we have a career coordinator in each building. So we had a total okay. ad of our district and we've got 6,400 kids. So we had a total ad of four staff members to just build and maintain those business partnerships. And we continually add, so some of our, you know, we added um, IDEW last year. We've got the Carpenters Union. We've got various trade unions. We've got some apprenticeship programs. So we continually, and we really are looking on, like, those career programs for things that we can get kids into, ideally an apprenticeship program. Uh, the link that I shared with you at Conrad Life is, yeah. a, you know, that's a student that's in an ICAT um, uh, uh, internship program, so I'll give you a sense of that. But you've got to build these relationships. And, and the other thing we do is we spotlight our business partners. We bring them in. We have roundtables. And so, like, for example, um, we'll bring in some manufacturing business partners. And we will bring in groups of our teachers, groups of our administrators, some support staff, just to have a conversation. Because we're trying to build, you know, the understanding of both parties, of what we do, what they do. And then we listen to them for things like, what can we do better to help prepare kids? We've even made a few curriculum designs that are open to other curriculum designs. If, for example, like we're, we're teaching uh, fire science now. So that for kids that maybe want to go in and, and, and work as an EMT, we've got some licensed EMTs right in school. Uh, we, you know, our kids that think they want to be fire. We're working with 
our lo- one of our local police chiefs to run a program that's going to look at kids that maybe want to go to uh, you know, in, into law enforcement. So we're continually growing that. We're trying to, you know, frame it. I will say this: most of our business partners are actually small business partners. Okay. One of them, uh, she runs a social media marketing. Uh, 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 business, and actually, she spoke to my community advisory council a couple months ago. She was fully transparent. She goes, at first, I just took an intern because I was looking for some free help. But then she found out our kids are really good. This was a really sharp kid. She's been able to add clients. She ended up hiring our intern as an employee, and now she's got another intern. So think about that. She brings an intern on. That kid helped her grow her business. Yeah. So those are the kind of stories we're seeing, and, and we've been at it long enough it takes on a life of its own. So people talk about it. Hey, you, you know, uh, yeah, I've got an interest. It's been awesome. So we'll have people approach us and, and our business partners bring in other business partners. So it's, it's really become a thing that is, is somewhat self-sustaining. Um, you know, if you get a chance, uh, uh, Greg Firstenau and David Lett down at Litchfield are just starting this. They've come up and visited our program. So, so they could give you a perspective of like, you know, starting from the ground up. But there, but there, there are, uh, you know, the first thing to do is start because here's what you find out. Businesses often don't know what we do and we don't often know what they do. And we're in the same community. We have a mutual interest in sustainability. And you talk about, you know, something that's interest based. Many of our, especially our manufacturers, they say, well, we can't get qualified employees. Well, we're the answer to that problem. Yeah. <laughs> and, Absolutely. and it's up to, it's, it's up to us to build that partnership. And, and our partners are all too ready for us to, uh, to partner in that because it's good for them. It's good for us. And, and what I find from a lot of our business partners is even beyond the value, it, it, it's, it, it adds to their business because some of our business partners are just, doing it to give our kids experience. But there is an altruism that I find in a lot of our business owners that they want to make our schools better, they want to make our community better, they want to serve our kids. And it's been one of the most meaningful experiences I think I've had in my career is to see how this has grown in really some unexpected ways even. It's far exceeded my expectations. Um, you know, I set goals with my board years ago. We have exceeded our goals every year, so we have to keep reframing new goals, um, which is a good problem to have. Yeah, meeting and exceeding goals, that, uh, that's a great problem to have. So, uh, yeah. you know, if anybody's listening here and they want to learn more about what you're talking about, uh, Ken, and what your district is doing, uh, I just invite them to check out this week's episode 55 of Anchored in Education, where we talk about getting it right for every student. Ken, thanks again. All right. Thank you, Scott. Now, I know that it was a short episode this week, but I couldn't help but give Ken a little bit more time to talk about his district and the great things that they're doing. And remember, you can read more about Ken on my website, eScottEngland.com. In the resource section, there will be many of the articles and videos we referenced in the last episode, so you can read more about the specifics on what is happening in Ken's school district. Don't forget, head to Twitter and search at KenWallace207. Before Before I wrap up today's episode, don't forget to subscribe to Anchored in Education on whatever platform you get your podcast. The episode, Getting It Right for Every Student, should resonate with every educator out there. It is our job to make sure that education is not just a monotonous routine in which students move about in a robotic fashion. When they finish high school, it should be more than just walking across the stage to receive a diploma. That is not what high school is all about. They should be walking across the stage knowing where it is they are walking to. Students deserve to have a direction, an insight into a profession in which they are passionate. Too often, I think, people end up in jobs and professions because that was what was predestined for them. Why can't we see to it that students are given the opportunity to explore what it is that gets them excited? I don't expect every school to become Maine Township High School District overnight, and I think Ken would tell you that wouldn't work anyways. You need to design your high school that best serves students for the area in which you are in. But we must move past the archaic model of high school that we have been stuck in for decades now. Students businesses, parents, and society in general will thank you. 
And remember, at the end of the day, we are all anchored in education. <laughs>